One of the worst films of all time returns to the big screen, and it brings along a couple of very special guests. I'm Tom, and this is a special Six Leg Productions review of Riff Tracks Live Presents Manos, The Hands of Fate. <laughs> August 16th, I got the very special privilege to go and see Rift Tracks Live, which is a live event starring Mike Nelson, Kevin Murphy, and Bill Corbett, the Rift Tracks crew. For those who don't know, Rift Tracks is essentially the evolution of Mystery Science Theater 3000, a show from the 90s in which a guy and two robots watch a bunch of B-movies and make jokes and riffs about it. Today, the robot aspect is gone, unless you count Disembodio, the, uh, this robotic voice that syncs up the riffs with the film. But the core theme of just completely tearing apart and making fun of movies remains the same. And last night I was fortunate enough to see them rip Manos the Hands of Fate, which is arguably one of the most popular episodes of the MST3K days. For those of you who are fortunate enough to have never heard of Manos the Hands of Fate, it was a film that was made in 1966. It was written, directed, produced, and edited by Hal Warren, who was a insurance and fertilizer salesman who made this film based on a bet that horror movies were not very hard to make. I swear I'm not making this up. The story is... How do I explain the story? It's about a family on their first vacation that end up stranded in this barren house in the middle of the El Paso desert that is run by a mustached Illuminati figure and his polygamous cult that are made up of uh, six wives. And Torgo, the... I guess he's a handicapped caretaker, but he always just comes off like he's constantly drunk. That's basically all you really need to know about the plot. As far as the film goes, this is quite literally one of the worst movies ever made. You got the usual acting and writing being terrible, but that's that's not even the worst part of the film. The worst part is the cinematography and editing itself, the technical stuff. The camera work is abysmally bad. There are times when it's not even zoomed in properly or it zooms in mid-scene, but not like in a dramatic way, like someone doesn't know how the zoom function on a camera works. On top of that, there are plenty of times where the camera lingers on a scene that has no relevance to what is actually going on at the moment. And other times where the camera's not even in focus. The character in the shot is completely blurry, it's focusing more on the background, which most of the time is just showing the paint on the walls. The editing is atrociously done, all of the voice work and sound effects were dubbed in later, they weren't even part of the actual shooting, and it all sounds really off. Especially in the case of the little girl who, I swear, her voice dub was done by a 50 year old woman, and she's like... Seven. The music is terrible, it's all just saxophone and flute noises that it's not even a real melody, it's like someone was hired to just come in and play random notes. There's a subplot, and I use that term loosely, that have a couple in a car making out and the police constantly telling them to leave. It has absolutely no significance on anything else that goes on in the movie, it's really only there because the actress in the car was supposed to be one of the wives and she broke her leg and they had to find a place to use her otherwise the production team was gonna get sued. Yes. I'm serious. And despite the overbearing presence of the cult in the latter half of the film, it never actually explains what Manos is or what the purpose of the cult is. You could easily replace it with a family of bunny rabbits and it would essentially make about as much sense. I could go on and on about how terrible this film is. I could do a whole college presentation on it. And I hope to God that somewhere, some film class is showing this film and having this film students just pick it apart. In short, this is an amateur film of the lowest caliber. It was such a laughing stock when it premiered that Hal Warren and the crew actually snuck out of the premiere before it even finished. None of the actors had a real career outside of the film. Actually, the actor who played Torgo committed suicide about a month before the premiere. And the film eventually faded into obscurity until Mystery Science Theater 3000 brought it back and it made it a cult hit. I don't even know if I can say it's so bad it's good on its own. Like, you really need to watch the Mystery Science Theater 3000 version or the riff, have the riff tracks for it. Otherwise, you're probably just gonna fall asleep during it because it's so boring. But because from a riff track standpoint this is comedy gold and seeing it done live was amazing. It was also fun to kind of see it done by a different crew because while Mike Nelson was a member of the MST3K crew at the time this episode aired, this was during the time when Joel Hogson was the uh, host still and when Tracy Bellevue was doing the voice for Crow, which is the robot that Bill Corbett eventually took over for. So Kevin Murphy was really the only one who came back for round two and then Mike and Bill were finally allowed to take their first shots at it. Before the actual movie we got a couple quick shorts that we saw at the beginning including a short film called Welcome Back Norman 
a commercial about prune juice, and a short educational film about the artistic use of cylinders. So in the next few weeks, if you hear somebody use a phrase like, that is so totally Norman, mention cylinders being at your fingertips, and make some reference to prunes, chances are it's because they went to see this. Either that, or they're just severely delusional. As for the Rift Tracks itself, it was hilarious. I think I preferred this one of the previous one, because even though the MST3K version was the more classic one, it reflected a lot more of the earlier years of, of the show, when the jokes were... It was a little more quiet, uh, the jokes were a little more spread out, there were a lot of pauses in between the riffing, so you could actually hear what the movie's going on. And in the later years, they were a lot louder, a lot more rambunctious, the jokes were a lot more rapid-fire, and it definitely kind of made the whole thing go by a little easier. The jokes only highlight the ridiculousness of the films, and they even make nods toward the MST3K episode, mostly when they are idolizing Torgo, for lack of a better word. Probably one of the best moments, at least from what I saw on Tumblr, was the uh, hillbilly twilight sketch they did about halfway through with the aforementioned couple making out in the car. It was uh, probably one of the best parts. They actually made a lot of references toward their uh, twilight riff tracks. I thought that was kind of funny. Also, I just want to point out that the theater was almost packed. There was barely an empty seat in the room, so if you don't believe that this is a popular event, take that on its merit. Like, they played to an almost sold-out room. Some movies can only be funny when there's a distraction in them, and Manos is one of those movies that needs riff tracks in the same way that a library needs books and patrons. Manos is a movie that does absolutely everything wrong and will put you to sleep on its own, but the riff tracks is fantastic and the crew does an amazing job with it. Mike, Kevin, and Bill are all dedicated masters to their crafts, and they are honestly three of the funniest people on the planet. I had not laughed that hard in a long time, and over the course of two hours, I did a lot of laughing. And ultimately, the point of the event was to go and laugh at a really terrible movie, and it did its job well. If you've never been to a Rift Tracks live event, I highly recommend you go. They're going to be doing Birdemic in October, so check your local theaters to see if it's going to be playing near you. But I would give Manos, The Hands of Fate, an F, and the Rift Tracks live event an A+. Alright, that's it for now. Tune in next time where I start to do a little series on this channel in which I take the Kevin Smith View Askew films from Clerks to Clerks 2 and almost everything in between and do a review of each one. Until then, I'm Tom, and this has been Six Look Productions. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, a favorite, subscribe to the channel, post it on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Google+, Reddit, something awful, spray paint on buildings, make a flag of it, get a tattoo in your forearm, get a brand into your forehead. This is Six Look Productions saying keep the spirit of the movies alive.